Hi, my name is Megalyn at Chikumwake, and I am so lucky to have recently been on the latest cover of Afropolitan Magazine. Right when we did that cover, I was training for the New York City Marathon. And I did that almost a year ago. Um, I didn't die. Um, yeah, thank God. I didn't die and I didn't do that bad. I ran it in four hours and 22 minutes. Wow. Yeah. It's not bad, but you know, if, it's not competitive. But um, I wasn't competing. I was just competing with myself, my mind. It was just a bucket list thing, and I was raising money for this African organization called AMREF. AMREF, yeah, AMREF, they, um, they are based in Kenya, and they are a healthcare organization, so they provide healthcare all over Africa, mostly for women and girls. Um, for instance, they have an FGM program um, in Kenya that uh, I find so inspiring. They've actually done a lot of work from the ground up, working with the tribe, with the different tribes, working with the elders within the communities to educate them on the dangers of FGM and how supporting their women um, with education um, could actually add a lot more value to the community than mutilating their genitals <laughs> um, for, you know, a high bride price, things like that. So, um, so yeah, definitely check them out. They're a great organization to support. Um, based in Kenya, but they operate all over, all over Africa, several different countries. Yeah, the thing I'm doing now, and what I've been doing for the past few months, um, it's a show called Almost Family. It just premiered on Fox a couple weeks ago. Thank you. Um, and that show is, also very timely because A, it's dealing with the idea of sisterhood and what that means uh, within a certain community, um, within our community, but um, just in general. And it's also dealing with um, what it means to discover who your real father is when you're well into your adulthood. The show is about three women who realize that they are sisters after the truth about the fact that their father was their fertility, was their parents' fertility doctor. And the fertility doctor was using his own genetic material to inseminate his patients without their knowledge or consent. Excuse me, sir. My source alleges that you use your own sperm to impregnate a woman at the Beckley Clinic. Patients of the Beckley Clinic, the whole story of how they came to be could turn out to be a lie. Patients are taking matters into their own hands so they can find out the truth. You okay? That's just a little more truth than I was ready for. So this doctor has upwards of 100 children and the story follows these three specific sisters um, one of them being his actual daughter um, and she finds us and realizes that we're a sister so we sort of form we form a bond we form a sisterhood we form a bond because um, we need each other we're all we all think we're only children and it turns out we have all these siblings did you know classic Leon Leon Beckley Julia's father I grew up with them I'm your mother I carried you I cared for you that's what matters something in the way you roll your eyes Julia actually does the same exact tooth tapping thing. No, I don't. So does Edie. I do not tap my teeth. What if it's like a shared genetic trait? Like rolling your tongue into a cigar shape? But now you're the only thing that's good. Do you guys want to get a sister selfie? My character is married to a man, but also exploring her sexuality with a woman and, and realizes she's in love with a woman. So a lot to play there. <laughs> I can't believe it's not just me anymore. I have sisters. There is so much wrong going on outside. You find out very early on in the pilot that I am having an inappropriate relationship with the DA. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, it's very dramatic. The rest of the yeah. yeah. Lots wow. of drama. Yeah. <laughs> Which outfit did I love the best? Which look did I love the most? From the oh, that's really hard. H Diddy did such a great job styling that. But I think I have to say, as much as I loved them all, the blonde corset was my favorite. The silver chainmail corset by the blondes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a silver yeah. chainmail corset. Yeah. Very sexy, right. very, very cool. Very like burlesque Joan of Arc vibes. I love that and I love the blondes. I love all their stuff, so yeah. How, was, how did I get involved in LA Women Rising? Well, I am lucky enough to have known Nana for many years, probably over 10 years now. Um, yeah, we were young ragamuffins living in Venice, you know, making weird art and, and um, acting and, and all that. And um, this is something she's been working on for about eight years. And so um, when she asked me to be a part of it, I was really honored because I love the concept. And um, yeah, so it was kind of a no brainer because I just have always been a big fan of hers and she's such a great visionary artist. So, um, yeah, and that, I love that it's coming out now because it was like 10 years ago and I'm like, oh, I look young. <laughs> That's how I still look. Um, yeah, and so, but she's gone on to do so many wonderful, amazing things. This is just one of the many things that, that she's up to. So it's really cool to have been a part of that. And um, we've since worked together on several things. So more to come. Yeah. Uh, any last words? I would say Viva Afropolitan Magazine. <laughs>